What's up, fitness fam? Welcome back to my channel. Okay, today we're gonna talk about a plateau. If you are stuck in a plateau, you're in the right place because I'm gonna go over some things today that can fix this. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, number one, make sure that you are tracking your calories. I cannot tell you guys how important this is. Um, get my fitness pal, make sure every lick, every bite that you take is tracked because it all adds up at the end of the day. And if you're not unaware of exactly how much you're eating, you might be surprised um, after you log it all in where you're at. So that's probably one of the most important things to make sure that you're in a, a calorie deficit 100%. Okay, so now that I've mentioned that, that is probably one of the most important things is just tracking all your food. Um, Cause you, like I said, at the end of the day, you need to know where you're at, um, your macros as well. Okay, so if you've done all that, you're sure you're in a calorie deficit, um, here's one thing that you can do. Um, take your cardio, whatever you're doing now, and up it by 10 minutes per day. Try that, try it for two weeks, and see how that works. So that is one thing, just one thing of many that you can do. And by the way, back to the calorie deficit thing, if you're really unsure where your calorie deficit needs to be, I do have a free calculator on my website at claremorrow.com. I'll put the link up here so you can copy it. I'll also put it below too, um, but it's claremorrow.com. I've got a free macro calculator and a free calorie deficit calculator. Use them, they will help you. All right, that aside. So. You can up your cardio by 10 minutes. You can also, the next thing you can do is drop your calories by about um, 50 calories per day. Um, do that for two weeks and see how that works. Really pay attention to your body. Don't always go by the scale too because it's not the most accurate way to check. Go by how your clothes are fitting. Go by measurements, measure your waist, measure your hips below the bones. That is the most accurate way to track. Your clothes will never lie to you, girl. <laughs> they will never lie to you or die. Um, uh, the scale, however, when you're lifting especially, will be all over the map. Um, when you're holding water, because think about it, when we lift weights, we're tearing up our muscles, right? So in order for those muscles to heal, they've got to kind of fill with water a little bit um, to heal up. So that can make you hold a little bit of water. So just know that when you're tracking with the scale. Um, I have a lot of women that ask me all the time, why is the scale not moving yet um, my clothes are fitting better? I'm like, that's because you're lifting weights, you're reshaping your body and recomping your body. So the scale is gonna be all over the map, but your measurements won't lie, your pictures won't lie, and neither will your clothes, sis. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing you can do when you're stuck in a plateau is maybe add another day of lifting. Let's say you're only lifting four days a week, try five days a week. If you're only lifting five, try six days a week. Um, just make sure you're not lifting longer than 45 minutes to an hour, that's really important. There is such a thing of over, as overtraining and you don't want your muscles to, they can literally shrink when you overtrain. I don't know if you know that, but they can. Uh, been there, done that. <laughs> don't make the same mistake I did. So you can add another day of training um, and then add even a little bit more cardio to the end of that. Now, back to cardio, another thing that you can do is add fasted cardio. Um, for those of you who don't know what fasted cardio is, that's where you get up first thing in the morning, you have a black coffee and water and you go to your cardio. So get your heart rate up to 125 at the very least to 130 um, and do that uh, You know, for 20 minutes or so to start with. Um, or if you're already doing 20 minutes, then up it to 30. And try that five times a week. I love fasted cardio. Um, for me, every coach I've ever had has told me to do fasted cardio. And it really does work. So let me explain what that is. Um, obviously, when you get up, you're in a fasted state and you're just going to go hit that cardio. So as long as you haven't had carbs, like starchy carbs the night before, this is how it works the best. So when you get up, you're in a fasted state, your body technically reaches for more of the fat stores for energy when you um, do your fasted cardio. So it burns off those calories and in turn helps you with the fat loss. Um, now remember, fat loss is 80% diet, but it's all cumulative as well. So, you know, all your cardio, all your workouts, all the diet is 80% diet, but the rest of it is moving more. Um, that's another thing that you can do too when you're in a plateau is make sure you're hitting 10,000 steps a day. So if you've got like a watch that can track that, like an Apple watch is what I have, 
Don't eat back those calories that you burn too, by the way, but try to get 10K steps a day. That does help. Movement throughout the day is where we really burn the most calories. Um, think about that, right? So um, definitely try that as well. But yeah, don't eat back those calories that your watch tells you you're burning. Why? Because it's not always accurate. <laughs> So another thing that I see a lot as a coach is I see people eating too much natural fats. That is a real thing. So things like avocados, yes, they're good for you, but they're very high in fat. So be careful how much of this kind of stuff you're getting. Um, think of it this way. We don't eat a ton of fat to lose fat, especially when we need a well-balanced diet. So you're getting lots of protein. You're getting carbs as well, which we need for energy, brain function, and muscle recovery. Um, but there is such a thing as getting too much natural fat. The other one you want to be careful of is olive oil. I love it. It's good for you. Yes, but it's got 14 grams of fat in it for one itty bitty tablespoon and it's a hundred calories. So not only do your calories matter, but also your macros as well. So this is why I encourage everyone to track their macros on my fitness pal or some other good tracking app. The other thing that I see the mistake a lot too is peanut butter. Now, I love peanut butter just as much as the next person, but y'all, I can't be trusted with that mess because one tablespoon leads to two, leads to three. So therefore, I just don't have it in the house. But let me give you another option that's a bit better. Um, I like the powdered peanut butter. This one is um, flavored peanut butter. Can't really say that very well. There we go. Um, I'll put the link below where to find this stuff, but it's 45 calories. Um, like a gram of fat or something. So there's really not much fat in it. Also, peanut butter is not a good protein source. Okay, your protein sources are your protein shakes. Um, real food is always better though, like chicken, white fish, uh, bison, uh, you know, things like that, shrimp. Those are much, much better for your body and your digestion as well to do real food. And speaking of digestion, um, as we get older, our digestion does slow down a little bit. Our liver slows down a little bit. So um, that's why you, another reason why you want to keep your protein high. But if you're having those issues or if you're bloating, I just want to put this in here. This has been a game changer for me because, y'all, I'm 50. Most Some of y'all know that. Some of y'all don't. Let me hang this right the, way, right, the right way. Super enzymes and digestive gold. These are both really, really good. Um, you could just take two with each meal and it makes a huge difference in our digestion so that your body can process the good foods that you're giving it. So I'll put the link below where to find those. So the next thing you can do is carb cycling. I'm sure all of us have heard about carb cycling. So what is it exactly? Um, carb cycling is where you have a higher carb day on your back day or your leg day or some you know, strength training day or a more active day that you have and a lower carb day on your rest days or your smaller body part days like shoulders or arms or something like that, it is completely fine to not ex eat the exact same amount of carbs or even fats um, each and every day. Now, it is important to eat um, your one gram of protein per pound of body weight each and every day because your body needs that protein to help keep muscle as you lean down but also if you're trying to keep muscle for you know a competition or you don't want to look skinny fat at the end of your fitness journey it's really important to keep one gram of protein per pound of body weight in your meal routine um, and some people have a hard time doing that so I'm going to give you some tips on that um, Stretch out your meals four to five times per day. Take your macros and divide them out throughout the day. That will help you. Um, and then that will determine your portion sizes as well. So that's what I do. I eat five to six times a day. I take all my protein. I divide it out evenly um, throughout the day. Now my carbs, I usually keep earlier in the day. And uh, my fats are, you know, usually I just get my fats from my meats. You'd be amazed how many fats we get from our meats um, and some of the natural things we eat anyway, like a whole leg, for example. So that is what you can do to get all your protein in, um, keeping your macros right, and also, you know, the carb cycling as well. So now that I've touched on carb cycling, you can also do the same thing with calories. You can calorie cycle. Again, you don't have to eat the exact same amount every single day. So you can, you know, have a higher calorie day on one day and a lower calorie on the next. So definitely try that as well. That has been handy for me, both carb cycling and calorie cycling. Um, and again, track your macros, track your calories. You will be amazed if you're not currently do that, doing that, how much you're actually getting and didn't even know it. Um, so once you get that number and once you get, you know, you start tracking everything, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I had no idea I was eating that much food. No wonder I'm stuck or I'm not losing or what have you. So um, most of you do track, but if you don't, please do. It's a game changer. 
All right, so now that I've touched on all of that, one more thing I wanna touch on is ladies, if you're over the age of 40, and even guys too, um, but ladies especially because our hormones are different than men's, but get your hormones checked because you know all of a sudden if you've hit a wall but your diet hasn't changed much um, and you're in your 40s, it could very well be that your thyroid's not functioning right, your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone levels. Yes, we have natural testosterone in our systems just like men do, and they go haywire as we get older. All of our levels do. It's not a question of... If it's gonna go wrong, it's a question of when. Ask your mom that question, she'll be able to tell you. Um, I did a full in-depth thing on uh, belly fat on YouTube here, so definitely check out my other videos because they will help you. All right, that's all I've got today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Please like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you would like to see next. Somebody said they'd like to see my makeup routine, so I'll work on that perhaps next, but uh, let me know what else you'd like to, de like to see. And once again, thank you for watching. Thank you.